Now, based on everything that we've seen so far, you might conclude that higher dimensional optimization problems are really hard. You would be correct. They are. But sometimes you can get somewhere with Lagrange's method, even in arbitrary dimensions. Here is a high dimensional, arbitrary dimensional example of an optimization problem. Let's say you have variables x1 up through xn. They're all non-negative, subject to the constraint that they have to lie on a sphere of radius a. So the sum of the squares of the variables is some fixed constant a squared. Okay, what we want to do is maximize the product of the squares of the variables. So x1 squared times x2 squared times yada yada yada, all the way up through xn squared. Let's set up Lagrange. We need df equals lambda times dg. These partial derivatives are not so bad. Fix a variable xj. The partial of f with respect to that is 2 times xj times the product of the squares of all the, the non-xj variables. That's the left-hand side. The right-hand side, we get simply 2 times lambda times xj. Now, what this equation means is that either xj equals 0, and that can't be the case. That's not going to be maximal, right? That, that, that product is going to be 0. Get rid of that. Or the other case, divide both sides by 2xj, and we get that lambda is equal to the product of xi squared for all uh, i not equal to j for every single j. And that immense amount of symmetry means that the only critical point is going to happen when all the xj values are the same for every j. So if I substitute that conclusion into the constraint, I really get that n times xi squared equals a squared. Solving for xi, I get that xi equals a over square root of n. This is the same number for all values of i. Now this has to be the maximum. We just think about it for a little bit. You can see all the other critical points have value zero. So the maximal value is the product as i goes from one to n of xi squared. Substitute that in. That's a squared over n quantity to the nth power. Now, why is this important? This is important because it gives us an inequality. If you're not at the maximal value, you have this less than or equal sign. Take the nth root of both sides of this inequality, and what we get is that the product of the xi squareds, nth root, is less than or equal to the sum of the xi squareds divided by n. Now, what is that good for? Well, let's do a simple replacement. Instead of xi squared, let's substitute in something new, a new variable, y sub i. And what we get is on the left-hand side, the product of the y sub i's, nth rooted, is less than or equal to the sum of the y sub i's divided by n. That term on the right-hand side is just the average, or the algebraic mean. On the left-hand side, we have the geometric mean of these y variables. And this is a phenomenally important inequality in mathematics called the algebraic geometric inequality, or AMGM sometimes. That means that the geometric mean is always less than or equal to the algebraic mean. And now you're having a dream, a dream of something to come. If you take a course in real analysis, then these courses tend to rely on some very important inequalities. Cauchy Schwartz, Holder, other guys like that. Many of these are proved via Lagrange's method, via an optimization. That's a good way to get an inequality.